We will be spending some time today to data log our A4 Quattro to see if our fuel system can deliver enough fuel to the engine on requirements. So if you are here just for the tutorial on VCDS on how to do it, I'll drop a time frame for you on the screen. You can just jump forward over there. But if you want to find out a little bit more about your fuel system and how it works, just stick here with me for a while. Most of the cars, if not all the cars, has got two fuel pumps. One is known as the LPFP and the other one is known as the HPFP. Don't get confused, it's really not that technical. It's just saying low pressure fuel pump and a high pressure fuel pump. So how it initially works is that your low pressure fuel pump is located in the back of your fuel tank. Your high pressure fuel pump is located in your engine bay. So let's go into a little bit more details. All your low pressure fuel pump is doing is sending fuel from your tank to your engine bay and then your high pressure fuel pump will just initiate and increase the pressure sending it to your injectors that is technically about it so now that we have an understanding of how our lpfp and our hpfp works <laughs> sorry i just wanted to say that to sound clever so anyway now that we know how it works we're going to understand what vcds is telling us technically we have got three areas we work on with vcds the first area is our specified area, meaning that our engine is requesting 6,000 kPa as an example. And then we've got an actual area, which is telling us how much our car is reaching now, if we do reach our specified value. Obviously, if we're requesting 6,000 kPa, we need to be able to give 6,000 kPa. And then also, we have got something known as the duty cycle. So if you have been watching my videos, this is something new, the first time I'm talking about it. Duty cycle is how hard it's working, right? It's working out in percentages, like for example, let's say your engine is requesting 6,000 kPa and its actual value is 6,000 kPa. As an example, so the specified and the actual is exactly the same. So your fuel demands is met, but your duty cycle is running at 99%. It means that that fuel pump of yours is running at max the entire time, which is actually not good. Sorry, guys, I hope this wasn't too technical for you guys. So if it is, just drop a comment or something. I'll respond to you guys and see if I can clear it up a bit. Let me just try that again. Your car is requesting 6,000 kPa. You are delivering 6,000 kPa. So those two boxes are ticked. But because your duty cycle is so darn high, it means that your fuel pump is actually working itself bonkers, right? So you don't actually want that. You want to install a bigger fuel pump then, which can obviously work less to give the demands, which is also going to help with upgrading in the future. Let's say you want to request 7,000 kPa in the future. It, you Technically, you can't. Your fuel demand is not going to be met because it's barely running 6,000 kPa on the actual value. Okay, I hope that helped everyone out. I hope it didn't confuse anyone. So that is a little bit of a, a mind twist. So we're going to go over to our VCDS and we are going to do all the left, right clicking buttons and stuff. And we are going to data log this car. At this moment, you want your car's ignition to be on. You're going to plug in your VCDS. I actually like to take the cable around my steering wheel so it's not in the way when I'm driving. So once your VCD is open, you're going to go over here to select a control module. And obviously your fuel system falls underneath your engine. So what it's going to do now is it's going to try to connect to your engine. And what you're going to do is you're going to go here to advanced measurement values. You're going to click quickly on that. And here you can choose exactly what you want to check out. So what we, what I usually intend to do is I like to keep my engine speeds ticked over here. So this is not your actual speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour. This is actually how the speed of your engine rotation, meaning your RPMs. Okay, so this is going to tell us when we are accelerating, when it's requesting more, inf uh, more fuel or less fuel or the duty cycle at which certain RPM, which is just really awesome to know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the search value block over here. We're just going to type in fuel. So I just want to let you guys know that it seems to me like all different kind of VCDSs or different cars, you can actually see different fuel measurements. So in my case, I don't have a lot of fuels to choose from. I saw some cars or oh, well, some VCDS displaying your low pressure fuel pump and your high pressure fuel pump, where in this case, it only looks to be like my high pressure fuel pump. 
So and never mind that. Unfortunately, we cannot see the low pressure fuel pump. But you guys, this is at least a tutorial so you guys can get to that point where you can just check this out yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to say over here, our high fuel pressure specified value. So this is how much the car is requesting. So currently the car's ignition is on. It's requesting 4,000 MPA. And over here is our actual fuel pressure, which is currently at 15,610 kPa. Don't worry about this value as yet. It will change once we start and drive and all of those things. And then also over here, we got our fuel pump specified value so this is the percentage of the fuel pump actually working you'll see this number is also going to change once we start driving which is kind of a mind-bogging system because it's saying specified value but it's actually giving an actual value so what we're going to do is <clears throat> sorry we're going to start the car quick and here already we can see our um specified value is 4000 mpa so don't get confused now when you see all of a sudden this one is 4,000 kPa, this is just a different term, technically MPA is above kPa because it's 4 MPA, so here is just a, a value of more decimals uh, obviously, so we can see we are about at 4,000 uh, MPA or kPa at that entire time, which means at idling our car is working okay, it's, we are having the fuel demands. Below it, we've got our fuel pump duty cycle. So we are currently at 47%, 47.5% duty cycle. If I accelerate, you guys can see it went up to 48%. So yeah, once we do accelerate, we go into the higher um, gears and speeds and stuff, you will see it actually fluctuate. So yes, there we go. So we got our high pump, high fuel pressure, uh, specified value, the actual value and our duty cycle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly go to a safe road where no one is hopefully gonna be at. We're gonna do a third gear pull. We're gonna make sure, and I, I know you you have to do a fourth gear pull just for me on the roads, uh, especially here in South Africa, there's so many puddles and stuff. I really don't wanna put my car in fourth gear. I'm gonna exceed the speed limit and etc. I don't want any fines or nothing of that. So we're gonna do a third gear pull. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go on the road, shift to third gear. We're gonna keep our RPMs low. We're gonna put our laptop here on our side to talk about it. What we're gonna say is we're gonna say log quick. We're gonna choose the area. So we're just gonna say, desktop we're gonna change the log file name to fuel we're gonna say save okay there we go because we're gonna check out our fuel system so now i know where i place it etc so as you can see we've got a start button here i'm gonna be placing my laptop right here next to me on the seat we don't want it to be on our lap when we're gonna do it we don't have to check out anything we check out everything afterwards so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go onto the road we're gonna get into third gear we're gonna keep our rpms low we're gonna reach around, we're just gonna click start, we're gonna put our foot, foot down to the floor, we're gonna accelerate until the car shifts. In other words, if I'm automatic, so the car's gonna shift automatically to fourth gear. So when it does shift, I'm gonna let off my foot from the fuel, from the, the accelerator, if you wanna call it that. And we're gonna just slow, uh, slow it down a little bit, we're gonna reach over and we're gonna press stop. So you don't want to like be busy with the computer while you're driving. Please look ahead of you. Be safe. Do it in a safe area where there's no one. Uh, but yeah, anyway, okay. So let's quickly move the seat forward. Let's go to the road. Okay, so we are in third gear. I'm going to press start. Foot to the floor. There she goes. And there she shifted. So that is my speed alarm. Don't worry about that beep. Okay, so we're going to slow down to the comfortable speed, which we're at now. We're going to move over and press stop. So there we go. That is literally all you have to do. So I'm going to make a U-turn and head back home. So what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly go onto the browser. We're going to put our hotspot on. We're going to be searching for datazap.me, such as me. So this is technically where we're going to upload that log. We're just going to put it in a graph format for us. If you don't have a datazap.me account, what you're going to do is you're going to create one quick. Oh, device is ready for usage. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go to upload log. You're going to click on that. We're going to take the first one, which is English, or if it's an international one, you might as well choose that one. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go and drag. Honestly speaking, I might as well just go over here, browse. You're just going to click on browse. You're going to either drag it in there or just select it. We're going to go to desktop 
And over here, you guys will see is fuel one. What actually happened was I messed up when I wanted to do the actual run the car geared back way too late, like in 4,000 RPMs. So I redid it, fuel number one, we're just gonna say open. So what I really like about this thing, and I've been mentioning in all my videos, so if you haven't seen those, don't worry, I'm gonna explain now. So right over here, you guys can see this public. What I can do is I can literally go and type everything in here. I will update this later, but yes, and you guys can actually go to my logs on DataZap and go check out the logs yourself on my account. So you can just search, I don't know how it works, all I know is my my file name or my data zap account name is Saber Tooth Performance. You guys can just go check it out. So now that it's fully uploaded, we can say save. And now comes the moment of truth. Oh gosh, I'm always nervous when this is happening. So right over here, you guys can see this is when we started the the data logging. We started at 2,000 RPMs. We pulled it all the way till 6,000, which is uh, 100 RPMs less than usual. So then it automatically shifts. And then right over here, I just let go of the fuel. We were slowing down till a comfortable speed where we could have stopped. Okay. So now if we go a little bit further down, right over here, you can see there's the other uh, thingies that we logged. So right over here is our high fuel pressure. This is our specified value. So over here, it was requesting about 10. So after years, it was requesting about 16 all the way through till when the car shifted at 624. Okay, so now that we know that this is the requested, we're going to go check out what was our actual. So it is this one. I think, yeah, it's this one right over here. Here is our actual. So obviously, this one at the bottom will drop. Remember, that was 16 MPA, whereas the new one is 16 KPA. So it's 16,000 over 16. So as we remember, it was 16 the entire time. From MPA to KPA, it's 16,000. So we're just going to have a look at our actual value to make sure it's around 16,000 the entire time. As you can see, 16,290, 16,170. There's a 15,880, which is a little bit less feel than what we would have want or pressure in that case, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's around that area the entire time. It's actually looking good. I, I must say, if we do look here, it has a bit of a downtrend. Like we started off at 16 to 90, which was a little bit too much feel. And then going down over here, well, not too much feel, too much pressure, sorry. Going over here to 15, 770. So now we can see the further we push our car, the more it's going of a downtrend. So I think the moment of truth to see actually how much our duty cycle is of our pump, it's this one over here. So you can see as we are accelerating, the pump is being asked to work harder. So as you can see, we started off at 49%, give or take 50%. We ended up in, oh wow, 56%. So we are literally just using a little bit more than half of the high pressure fuel pump. So this is actually very awesome to know is that our pressure seems to be extremely good. So it does tell us that if we want to upgrade something now, we don't have to upgrade the high pressure fuel pump because its duty cycle is only 56%. So we are still far away from actually upgrading it. Here we can see it actually went down with a 0.2, which is nothing. Our fuel pump is really good. So there was also another option. I was just curious to see it. It was our fuel temperature. Ooh. Okay. So when we started this, when we started the run, we were at 45, which I think is probably the degrees Celsius. They never said we dropped all the way down till about give or take. We might as well just go over here. 42 degrees Celsius. So we lost about three degrees Celsius on a pool. That's probably to do with the flow, pulling cold fuel from the uh, tank and then all the way down here when you let go of the fuel the fuel temperature stayed constant until it started to creep up again but honestly i don't know much about the fuel temperature i must actually do some research about it it's just kind of interesting to see it i never thought about something like fuel temperature but anyway guys there we go so just a quick heads up as you guys can see what we actually want to see is this flat line over here and guess what we do see a flat line over here. I must say it actually creeped up over here to 17,000 uh, KPA or 17 MPA, uh, which is on the shift. 
So I think what it does is, is add a little bit more feel on the shift for some pops and bangs. Now I'm just joking. I think it's just so that, uh, yeah, it gives a little bit more feel for the gear shift because we know DSGs, they keep on running. They just cut the ignition, uh, the, the ignite of the spark plugs during shifts. So obviously maybe it just creeped up a little bit more of the fuel pressure, but it came straight down because it also left the fuel. So anyway, guys, there we go. This Hopefully this was a good understanding for you guys to understand how the fuel system worked with the three values. If you guys have got any questions, do let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get to you guys as soon as possible. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, find it informative, helpful, educational, entertaining, or whatever, please make sure to give me a big like. I would really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you like these kind of things, learning and experimenting and all of these kind of things, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. Actually, this is my left. It's uh, mirrored. But yes, if you want to see a similar video, hit any of the two icons on the screen. And I'll see you legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.